Okay, I forgot to open the recording, but it's open right now. Okay, now, first we have to find the slope of the line. And the way we find is, now, this is 4 and minus 1 is 1, so 4 minus 1 divided by x2 minus 1. And uh, that's uh, 3 minus minus 2, so that's 5, so 5 over 5. 5 over 5 is equal to 1. So y is equal to y1, which is equal to minus 1, times m, which is 1, x minus x1, uh, which is x minus minus 2. So that y is equal to x plus 1 is uh, is the equation of the line uh, which shows the slope and the intercept. Now, of course, you can choose for the point 3 and 4 also. So in this case, y is equal to y1 plus m times x minus x1. So y1 is 4, if I choose this point, and x1 is 3, so that's x minus 3. You again get the same formula. So it doesn't make, it doesn't make any difference uh, which point you choose. You always get the same formula uh, for the line. Okay, now I suppose so we are given a line in its general form. That's 8x plus 5y is equal to 20. So we can rearrange this uh, equation. That's 5y five five y equal to 20 minus 8x. And uh, then it, it can be solved for y. That's 4 minus 8 over 5x. So the slope of this line is minus 8 over 5, and the y-intercept is equal to 4. <clears throat> now, if we take uh, two lines like this, y is equal to m1 x1, m1 x plus b1, and y is equal to m2 x plus b2. Suppose we have two lines. Now, these lines are parallel if m1 is equal to m2. That's obvious to see, but B1 should not be equal to B2. If both are equal, then that you are talking about the same line. But if B1 is not equal to B2, these lines are parallel if M1 is equal to M2. Now, the lines are perpendicular if M1 times M2 equal to minus 1. But the only exception uh, exception is horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, these are vertical to each other. Uh, and uh, this does not uh, hold for these lines. But for all other lines, which are perpendicular to each other, m1 times m2 must be minus 1. OK, suppose we have two lines like this, l1 and l2. And the slope of this blue line is m1, that's l1. And the slope of this yellow line, that's l2, m2. So actually, this slope is equal to tangent phi1. The slope of the blue line, l1, is equal to tangent phi1. The slope of this uh, yellow line, that's l2, is tangent phi2. Now let's look at the uh, triangles here. Consider A, B, C triangle here. This triangle is similar to C, D, B, C, D, B, because one of the angles is 90 degrees, the other angles are equal. Since these are perpendicular, this is uh, the angle B1, same as here. So. Uh, ADC and CDD are 
of this uh, similar triangles. So what's the slope of uh, the blue line? That's tangent C1 here, A divided by H. So A divided by H tangent C1, that's the slope of the blue line. Now, how about the slope of the yellow line? That's P2. That's actually, as you can see, negative because P2 is greater than 90 degrees. But that's 8 or minus 8 over A. Now, this is A over H, and 1 is A over H, and 2 is minus H over A. The result is minus 1. So it's obvious from this figure if the two lines are perpendicular to each other, uh, the multiplication of their slopes should be equal to minus one. And it's obvious from here also, if the lines are not parallel and they are different lines, they must intersect. Okay? They must intersect. That's obvious from here. Okay, that's an example. Y is equal to X plus 1, and now Y is equal to X plus 2 are parallel lines because the slope for the first one and the second one is 1. So these are parallel lines. But now Y is equal to X plus 1, and Y is equal to minus X plus 1 are perpendicular lines because the multiplication of their slopes is minus 1. Two lines which are not parallel always intersect. We said that, but where does it come from? Okay, suppose you have two lines here, M1x plus V1, M2x plus V2. They intersect with most people, of course. But what does this tell us? I can we solve for x here to find the x coordinate of the intersection? Okay, x is equal to v1 minus v2 divided by m2 minus m1. Since these are not parallel, this is not zero. This number is not zero. So, since this number is not zero, you can always solve x. x, the point of intersection. Oh, okay. So, here, what's the point of intersection for these two lines, okay? X plus one minus X plus one. Okay, if you equate them, uh, X is equal to zero is your X coordinate. When X is equal to zero, Y is equal to one for both cases. So they intersect at point zero one, these two lines. So that's sort of a verification of the fact that if you have two lines which are not parallel, they always intersect because I can always find a point which these lines intersect. Another uh, example, y is equal to 2x plus 3, y is equal to minus x plus 2. So these are the two lines we have. Their slopes are not equal, so they intersect. So the point of intersection can be solved from this equation here. Okay, so uh, that's 3x is equal to minus 1, x is equal to minus 1 over 2. And you can solve for 1, which is 2 times minus 1 over 3 plus 3, that's 7 over 3. Hence, the point of the intersection is this. 1 over 3 and 7 over 3. Minus 1 over 3 and 7 over 3. Now, using this, uh, you can also... Uh, find the distance from a point to a line, okay? 
let's give a line y is equal to x plus 2. That's the equation of the y. And the point is 2, 1. First, you should check that p, the point p is not, should not be on the line. If you put x is equal to y is equal to 4, not equal to 1. So this point is not on the line. Now, if the point is on the line, then, of course, the distance from the point line to be 0. So you first check it. Okay. How the distance from this point p to this line. Okay, this distance must be vertical. From point p, you draw a vertical line to this line. Okay, so and this must this line must pass point two one, and it must be vertical to this line. Okay, so I know how to find uh, the equation of uh, this uh, uh, line that passes through two one and perpendicular to this. So this has a slope one. The slope of the line passing through p perpendicular to this line should be minus and it passes uh, point to one so y is equal to one minus that's the slope minus one x minus two that's the x coordinate so that gives me uh, minus x plus three that's the equation of the line passing through this point and perpendicular to this line okay so I have to find the intersection of these two lines. So x plus 2 must be equal to minus x plus 3. OK? So if you solve from this, x is equal to 1 over 2. And now if x is equal to, so x is equal to 1 over 2. Now y is equal to minus 1 over 2, 3. So that's 5 over 2. So 1 over 2 and 5 over 2 is the point of intersection of this line with the line passing through this point and which is perpendicular to L. And distance now can be easily calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. So the distance from this point to this line is 2 minus 1 over 2. That's the x coordinate of the point P and x coordinate of the point of the intersection. Now, this is the y coordinate of the point P, and that's 5 over 2 is the 5 of uh, y coordinate of the point of the intersection. So you take the squares of each term, and in the result, you get 3 over square root of 2 is the distance from this point to this line, okay? Because if you do the subtraction, that's three over two squared, that's nine over two. If you do the subtraction, that's again three over four, uh, three over two squared, it's again nine over four. Okay. And you take the square root, and that's what you get. Let's continue. Okay, we have find, uh, previously we have find the distance between a point on a line. Now the distance between two points is actually you take the difference of the x coordinates and the difference of the y coordinates, you square them, add them, and you take the square root. That's called the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Now, uh, distance is an important notion. It was important for the real line because it gives you the coordinates. Here in the plane, you have two coordinates, and the distance are calculated like this. Okay, now a circle is the set of points equidistant from a point HK, which is called the center. Okay, equidistant means that from HK, that's a point on plane, the set of all points is the same distance from this point. So that X minus H square 
y minus k squared must be x squared must be equal to half, or you can write it like this. And this is, this is an equation for the circle. Now, R, of course, gives you the distance from the center. It's called the radius, and this is the standard formula for a circle with center at h equal h and k, and the radius r. Okay, let's continue. Suppose we are given this uh, quadratic formula that x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y minus 3 is equal to 0. What does this represent as an equation? Now we can write it as like this. Just write this as x squared plus 4x plus 4, the first term and the third term together. And this one, y squared minus 6y plus 9. Now, I added 4 here and 9 here, so I have to subtract 4 and 9. And that's minus 3 degrees here. So, now I can write this x plus 2 squared. And I can write this y minus 3 squared. So, this whole thing is 16. So, that represents a circle with center at minus 2, 3, and radius 4, because that's r squared. So that uh, circle is a set of points which have same distance from a given point. And using distance, we can just uh, define a geometric uh, figure. Now, problems are defined geometrically as the set of points whose distances from a given point and a line are equal. Okay. We are going to prove this later on, but let's consider a parabola, the formula. That's the general form of a parabola here. Y is equal to AX squared plus BX plus C where A, B, C are real numbers, is the general equation for the parabola. Now here, of course, A is not zero. If A is zero, that's the equation of a line there. So when you have a form like this, or equation like this, A must be now zero, so that you know that you have a parabola here. Now this equation can be written like this. That's uh, very obvious. You take A out, you have B over A here, and I can write this squared as A times X plus B over A squared. Now here at the end, you add B squared over 4A. 4A squared. So, you have to subtract this. This should be 4a squared. Okay. B squared over 4a squared. But the other times you have ax squared uh, 2 times b x plus and x plus and 2 you have bx and then of course c here. So that you can, this is the general uh, representation of a parabola with a now equal to zero. Uh, this is a more refined version of the equation for a parabola because this equation tells us a lot of things. For instance, it tells us that minus b over a, 2a, is the axis of symmetry because you have square in this term. Uh, I mean, if x is greater than this or less than this, it doesn't make any difference. It's the distance is the same. 
So this is called the axis of sphere. So when you write the parabola like this, you have the axis of symmetry. Is of course this. All right, so this is not a squared. It's a. That's correct. That's a because there's a multiplication to a a here outside. So c minus b squared over 4a is actually the vertex because when x is equal to minus b over 2a, that's on the symmetry axis, this term is 0, and that b is the vertex. Either it's the maximum point or the minimum point of the parabola depending. If a is greater than 0, and this term is zero, and that's the uh, minimum. Because when this term is not zero, you add something to this. So the vertex of the parabola has this coordinate, minus b over 2a, and the, that's the x coordinate, and y coordinate is c minus b squared over 4a. Okay. Now, if a is greater than zero, this parabola opens upward because this becomes a dominant term as x grows, okay? Or this term grows. As absolute value of a grows, the parabola comes more and more steeper because if absolute value of a is growing, then this term is becoming more and more dominant, and it makes the problem uh, steep. Now, if a is negative, of course, uh, the problem opens downwards, because this is a negative number, and you subtract this negative number from the vertex, and the problem opens downwards. Okay, let's give some example. Okay, y is equal to x squared. That's a typical problem. The symmetry axis is, of course, 0. x is equal to 0, the symmetry axis. And the problem is symmetric about this axis. The vertex is 0, 0, because when x is 0, y is 0, it's the vertex. Now let's look at this one. Now it's x squared 2x plus 3. Okay, I can write this portion as x plus 1 squared. So that, that becomes uh, 1 here. So the symmetry axis is x equal to minus 1. Okay, that's the symmetry axis of the parabola. This v over 2a is equal to 1 actually. That's the symmetry axis. Now, what's the vertex? Okay, uh, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 3. C minus B squared. Uh, B squared is 4, and 4A minus. So that's 2. So that's the console of the vertex, minus 1, 2. And the symmetry axis is this. Now let's look at this one. Y is equal to 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now what's the axis of symmetry? If you take 3 out, it's 2 over 3 here. So that's x minus 1 over 3. Okay, that's what. So x is equal to 1 over 3 is the symmetry axis. And the vertex is 1 over 3 and 2 over 3. You just calculate from here. C is equal to 1. B is equal to 4. Uh, 12. 4 over 12 is 1 over 3. So the vertex is 2 over 3. Now, we uh, write uh, here for short notation, like V here, uh, V of vertex here. So, the problem you can write like this too. 
y is equal to a times x plus v over 2a squared plus v, the vertex, minus v0 divided the vertex. Okay. Thus, the axis of symmetry minus v over 2a and the vertex is minus v over 2a v. Now, let's define the focus point of the parabola. The focus point is on the symmetry axis, so x coordinate is minus v over 2a. And y coordinates is vertex plus 1 over 4a. So you add 1 over 4a to the vertex on the symmetry axis, and you get the focus point. This is all the focus point of the parabola. Now the directrix line is defined like this. Y as a line, a parallel horizontal line, V minus 1 over 4A. So you subtract from V, the vertex, minus 1 over 4A. So that's a horizontal line. Okay, then the distance from any point XY on the parabola to the focus and to the directrix must be the same. Let's verify this. Okay. So we have the time focus and directrix. Now we want to calculate the distance from a point x, y on the parabola to the focus. Now y, x, y is a point y minus focus is here, v plus as we say, v plus 1 over 4a, that's the y coordinate. v plus 1 over 4a is the y coordinate of the focus. So if you subtract from y, that's y minus v minus 1 over 4a. Now, x coordinate of the focus is minus v over 2a. You subtract from x, so you get x plus v over 2a squared. So that represents from point x, y, which is on the parabola, the distance to the focus point. Now let's open this up. Now instead of y, I can write this. Okay, because y is equal to that. So when I write this, I have this equation. These cancel out. Uh, and here, that's the same. I don't, we have on a change. Now let's get the square of this after taking v out. So that's x a squared times x plus v over 2a to the power of 4. Now minus, uh, you have minus here, 1 over 4, 2 times uh, minus 1 over 2, uh, 1 over 4 times this 2 times, so minus 1 over 2 times x plus v over 2x squared. Now this term here, uh, plus, of course, square of this, that's 1 over 16a squared. And this term here. Now, as you can see, x plus v over 2a squared, uh, here is multiplied by 1 here, minus 1 over 2. So I can make this plus and cancel this one. But then, the remainder is the square of this term. When you take the square, you get this. So the distance from any point x, y uh, to the focus point of the parabola is this. Okay. Now we can similarly calculate uh, the distance from x, y to the directrix line. Since this is a horizontal line, uh, and v is equal to uh, y is equal to v minus uh, 4a, uh, we can simply calculate this. Okay, so y coordinate, because that's only a y coordinate that's important, x coordinate is zero, because this is a straight line, uh, y is equal to v minus 1 over 4a. So I subtract from the y coordinate this. And of course, again, I substitute this for y. Okay, and you have this. 
and these kinds of uh, hard form here uh, because when you you have one more boy and you get this thus when the parabola is the set of all points which has same distance from the focus and direct focus so this set of all points Okay, let's consider this uh, problem. Now I can arrange this equation like this. I can take two out, say, square. Now there is one here that comes from this uh, taking square and two, and so uh, three comes one here. So the axis of symmetry is minus one. X is equal to minus one is axis of uh, symmetry. The vertex is a minus one one because when this is zero that's the vertex. The focus is minus one not and the directrix y is equal to zero with no rate. That's all is on the here. Uh, and uh, the topic after this is functions in graphs. We will continue on Monday with functions and uh, graphs. Now, uh, I will send you the links for the students who did not get the links to buy the book. One student asking whether are we going to buy two books or not. No, you're not going to buy two books. You either buy hard copy of the book or e-text of the book, which means you have the PDF file of the book. That's, and you have a choice. For students who are outside Turkey, it's preferable because it's less expensive to buy the e-text. Because sending uh, the hard copy to a foreign country might cause a lot of uh, money. So if you're outside Turkey, uh, it's suggestible that you buy the index. You can also ask the hard copy, but I don't know how much will it cost. It might be expensive. Okay, so we finish it here. On Monday at 9 o'clock, I will see you again. And we continue with functions and graphs. Okay, have a nice day. I'll see you tomorrow.